What's up guys, Dylan with the Wash Nerds, and in this video we're going to be covering all things water-fed pole. So we've done traditional window cleaning in the past, but we just decided it's time to upgrade for efficiency's sake. So that's why we went ahead and bought a water-fed pole. And then we'll also talk about why we went with the filtration system that we did, and then get into actually building the filtration system. So our level of TDS in the area, that's total dissolvable solids, that determined that we needed an RO system as well as a DI tank. So you can run a DI tank without the RO system, but you're just gonna go through resin like crazy. So we decided to go ahead and build our own RO tank. So we'll be showing you that entire build along with the parts lists and which sites we purchased it from. That'll all be available down below in the description for free. Before we get too far into water filtration, we actually need to talk about TDS and what that is. So TDS is total dissolvable solids, and that's basically a measure on the spectrum of how hard or soft your water is. So with TDS, the general rule of thumb for water fed poles is you need 10 or lower to be able to clean spot free. Otherwise, you'll start getting spots on the window after you clean. So how we actually measure that is with a little digital TDS meter. This is just a cheap one off Amazon, but it happened to be the most high rated. And it even came with a nice little carrying case. To use this TDS meter, all you have to do is click it on, and then you just drop it in water. And I'm not gonna try to give you guys the readout on this, but this is actually 266 out of my tap water. So that is obviously way too high to get streak-free cleaning or spotless cleaning on windows. So we're gonna have to work with that. So that's what's going to drive your filter selection and kind of how you decide what cleaning system that you need. Starting out our water filtration system, we actually have a carbon filter. So this is a 10 inch by four inch housing from the company called Simpure off Amazon. And what this is gonna do is kind of remove our heavier contaminants as well as reduce the chlorine levels in the water. So chlorine is actually bad for RO filters and the RO filter membrane is the most expensive part of this entire build as far as piece price. So we're gonna really reduce the amount of RO filters and or membranes that we go through in order to make window cleaning as profitable as possible. So these filters, uh, this is actually a two pack at the time of filming this, the two pack was 50 bucks on Amazon. This is what the filters actually look like. This is a CTO filter, and if it just fits right down inside this. So if I remove this top, which it's obviously gonna be a lot tighter than that, they do include a filter wrench, so that way when you have this all mounted, you do have a way of getting this off. So if I remove that top portion, you can see down inside it, so this filter will just sit down inside of this container. So on this housing, we actually have a one inch MPT inlet and then a one inch MPT outlet. So that's kind of bigger than what we want to run for our system, which is why I bought two adapters. So this is actually a one inch MPT to three quarter garden hose thread or three quarter GHD. So I'm actually gonna put one on each side of this. And for whatever reason, these really seem to wanna cross thread, so be careful if you buy this exact part with this housing. Just make sure you've got everything properly aligned before going crazy and tightening these up. These little fittings do actually have a gasket on them. So you'll wanna tighten them all the way up to the gasket. So I just have those temp started. Um, and then we go to a garden hose to garden hose fitting. So for our inlet, we just want to be able to connect this to a garden hose. So if I just screw that on there, now we can go connect our garden hose straight in and this will be the first filtration item. So that's exactly where you'll plug in at. For our outlet, we actually want to step down to a three quarter inch uh, poly braid line and that's just personal preference, but I wanted to keep the flow kind of higher going into our RO membrane. So from here, I'm actually going to use another garden hose thread as well as a three quarter, or sorry, a three quarter GHT to three quarter inch barb. So that'll tighten right in. 
Uh, just one thing to note, three-quarter garden hose thread is actually a straight thread, so there's no taper to it like there is with three-quarter MPT. If you see those two at the hardware store, don't get them mixed up because they are not the same. So we'll do that, and then we'll actually plug this straight into our three-quarter poly braid. I like to put two hose clamps on if I can, and it looks like I have enough room on this barb, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. But that pretty much sums it up for our first filter out of the system. Uh, one other thing to note, they do include some thread tape and some mounting hardware. So you do have a mounting bracket for this, so that'll make it easier to connect. Uh, I'm assuming most of you are going to put this on a cart, as am I, so this will make this a lot easier to just drill four holes and go ahead and mount that up. Uh, one other quick thing to note, they do have this little spring valve on top. I believe it's called an air valve, and they do have an extra spring and cap included. So just remember that and then maybe keep this around on your trailer if you're going to be out in the field because uh, you never know when this might go. Just an easy thing to toss in your tool bag. So that pretty much sums it up for the carbon filter portion. Now the heart and soul of our RO system is going to be this Axion HF5 4040 membrane and this is what's going to be taking that high TDS water and really bringing it down. These RO filters can last a long time if you take care of them. Um, just one thing to point out too, the 4040 is actually 40 inches and approximately 4 inches in diameter. So that's where that comes from. And the HF5 series is kind of a high flow series filter. And that's just because we want to run the system off of the customer's water supply or just a standard spigot, which can reach about 60, 65 PSI. And most filter membranes for RO systems don't quite get that much flow at that uh, PSI range. So we wanted to make sure that we're getting the most flow possible to try to avoid adding a booster pump. If you want to just go ahead and add a booster pump, that will definitely eliminate the issue because you can always get a consistent pressure through your membrane. You can also add a second membrane in parallel. But to try to keep the cost down on this build, we opted not to do either of those. And we're just going to try a single filter from supply pressure. All right, now that we've got our RO membrane covered, let's go ahead and check out the housing that I bought for it. So this is a housing specifically for the 4040 size membrane, and it comes with these two end caps. You can see this one already has the O-rings put on it because I did that off camera, but you'll have to roll the O-rings on. That's pretty simple. And then it comes with these clips. So these clips are what actually secures the cap to the tube, you can see that sits around that groove there. And then we have one for the bottom side as well. Uh, we also have these straps for mounting, as well as these flush mount mounts for mounting to a flat surface. They wrap the tank nicely. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use either of those mounting options yet, but stay tuned and we'll find out. Next up in the build process, I'm going to prep our inlet and outlet caps for the membrane housing. So on our inlet cap, we have a half inch port as well as a three quarter port. You can see I actually just plugged the half inch port with a half inch Schedule 40 PVC plug. And then I have a three quarter to three quarter elbow on the inlet for the water, as well as a three quarter MPT to three quarter hose barb. And like I said, this will be used for our water in coming from the carbon filter. Next up on the outlet port, again, we have a half inch port and a three quarter port. And on the half inch, this is actually going to be where your clean water is exiting the housing. So I have a half inch MPT to a three quarter hose barb. And then this is actually your discharge. So I went ahead and tried a three quarter. This is just a standard three quarter spigot, kind of like what will be on the side of your house. I might end up going more to a remote setup later, so I don't have to bend all the way down to adjust it, but this will be plenty enough to get us working. So this is going to be used for adjusting the discharge valve, basically getting you that right, correct rejection rate, so that way you're optimizing your RO filter. So I'm going to go ahead and put thread tape on all these fittings and get them tightened in. Now that we've got our caps assembled, we are going to start with the bottom cap and assemble it to the membrane housing. So one thing to note guys with this 
double O-ring situation is we are going to need some lubricant to help get a better seal with these O-rings, but also help them from drying out over time and hopefully make it easier to remove someday when we do have to change this filter, even though you'll only be popping the top off. So what the manufacturer recommends is applying Vaseline to the O-rings before installation. So that is what I'm going to do for this assembly. So with O-rings, you don't need a ton, but you want to make sure everything's evenly coated. So I'm just picking out a small glob there and kind of working it around. I don't want massive globs over the O-rings, but what I'm trying to do is get a nice even coat across the O-ring. Kind of picture it like uh, putting on chapstick, but a little tiny bit thicker than putting on chapstick. And now that that's ready, I can go ahead and install it to the housing. So as you can see, I'm able to push that in and I will push it the rest of the way in when I stand this tube up, but that's the process for that. And then we are going to attach it to the tube with this clip. So these are 14 mil uh, bolt and nut just for reference. So I, I went ahead and grabbed two ratchets just for tightening these up. And we'll want to do kind of keep these bolts evenly tightened. So you don't want one all the way tight and this one all the way loose. That's just to prevent this from binding and trying to get the most even pressure that you can. Remember, these aren't actually tightening the caps on, they're merely holding them in place from the side. So you don't need to go crazy with this. And there you have it, a nice even spacing with the two bolts and we are ready to insert the filter and do the top cap. I went ahead and applied Vaseline to the two O-rings on the top cap already. So onto the membrane. This membrane actually has another gasket up top and I went ahead and applied a small coating of Vaseline to this as well, just to help it seal a little bit better. And then we are ready to insert this into the housing. So the bottom side will not have an O-ring. So that's how you tell top from bottom. These are actually directional and I'm just going to slide this into the housing. And there you can see it seat. And then we are ready to install the top cap. I'll be honest, that was way harder than I anticipated to get all those O-rings compressed and get that top piece on. So one little trick, uh, if you maybe leave the hardware off the bottom, you can actually set that on the floor and push straight down into it. That's basically what I did and it took all 210 pounds of me to get this thing to fully compress. But at least I wasn't damaging the hardware because I was doing it on a nice flat surface. So that's what I would recommend doing. And obviously you can tell that I just opted to take my hardware out and reseal it. So with all this put together, we are ready to assemble to our cart. So let's go take a look at that. All right, this is the final product of the build. So let's go ahead and step through each component real quick just to show you how I assembled everything. So starting off with the carbon filter, we have the mounting bracket that it came with, as well as the hardware provided. That's just bolted together. And then there's four holes on the other half of the bracket. So we mounted those through a three quarter inch piece of wood, as well as used four additional bolts to bolt that to the frame of our cart. So you can see those are all attached with nylon lock nuts, just to keep everything from backing out and making sure it stays tight as well as washers on the front to make sure that we're not going to pull the fastener through the wood and this isn't just spray painted black this is actually bed liner coating because i wanted to keep everything waterproof and make sure it holds up to the weather so with the carbon filter housing this is our inlet that we attach our garden hose to that's just a female to female to our one inch to three quarter adapter and then on the other side, we have the same adapter into a female to female. And that's where our three quarter poly braid starts. So we have our three quarter GHT fitting to our three quarter barb. And that's just hose clamped with the poly braid straight into another 90 fitting. So this is a barb to a barb 
with two more hose clamps and then up to our inlet to our RO membrane housing. So this is that three quarter threaded or male thread to three quarter female and then three quarter MPT to three quarter barb as well as our half inch plug. So that takes care of the cap. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we mounted the housing. So we just had this tightened to our frame. So we have a hole drilled on either side of the frame and we just ran the bolt through it, through the nut that's on the strap and then tightened both sides evenly. So that way we get a nice clean compression against the housing. That's plenty enough to keep it secure. And then we did the exact same thing with a lower cross member of the frame. So one thing to note is we do have that spacer. So you can see that spacer in between the crossbar and the actual membrane housing. That's just keeping it nice and secure. So that's how we mounted our RO membrane housing. This is the bottom of the RO membrane housing and you can see we got our discharge valve. So this is gonna allow me to control the flow rate of our bypass water through the membrane. And the more we bypass in general, the cleaner our water out is gonna be. So the cleaner the water that'll be heading to our DI tank. But we kinda wanna find a happy medium between cleanliness and flow rate. So you're gonna have to play around with that a little bit. Uh, the one thing I did is just before connecting our DI tank, I just went ahead and measured from this output hose to try to find what that looked like. And then I know that for future jobs. So I'll be able to set up quicker and just kind of adjust this from memory. So I suggest doing that before connecting your DI tank, just so that way you're not wasting resin trying to figure out the best optimal settings for your setup. But on the outlet side for our clean water, we have a half inch to three quarter barb, uh, three quarter barb to three quarter barb in 90, another 90, and then this just runs up to our DI tank. So this is our clean water line coming from our RO membrane. This is another three quarter to three quarter 90 fitting, and then straight into a three quarter barb to three quarter GHT. And then this is the fitting that comes with the DI tank. So from our DI tank, then we just have our outlet, which is provided by window cleaning resource with the tank. We have our on off valve and then straight into our quick connect for our 5 16 inch line. So all that comes with the kit. And then as far as mounting, you can see we just have a ratchet strapped. So I wanted something less than permanent uh, for this just because eventually we will have to pop this top off to replace the resin. So I didn't want to have to mess with a bunch of bolts or anything like that. And that's why we went with what we did. All right, so I just got everything up and running. So I just plugged the garden hose in, adjusted my discharge valve appropriately, and just proved to you guys that this is working. I'm going to go ahead and take a TDS reading out of the DI tank. So I'll pop this quick connect off. Get a quick water sample. And there you go. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope this gives you the courage and inspiration to build your own cart setup like this to hopefully save you guys a lot of money. As mentioned before, all the parts lists and other information will be linked down below. So I hope you guys enjoy. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.